The new NBA 2K24 cover was just released. It has Kobe Bryant on the legendary edition. I'm gonna show you how to recreate your own custom cover using your favorite player or even your own photo. It's all up to you. I'm gonna take you through Photoshop and show you how I went from this to this with Anthony Edwards. Head over to Photoshop, show you how it's done. All right, we're in Photoshop and we have our 2K cover here. We're gonna work on turning this into a template to create a cover with different people on it. So first thing I'm gonna do is come over here and right click on your layer. I'm gonna duplicate it. We'll change this one to background. Okay, so now we have our original and we have background here. And all I did was just copy and paste this into an Instagram size document of 1080 by 1350. Now let's remove Kobe from the background and try and clear all this off. To do that, we're gonna come over here to our toolbar and let's make sure we have the quick selection tool. Come up to the top keyboard, select subject. Okay, you can see the select subject does a decent job, but I need to select everything that um, we want to try and get rid of. So I'm going to come up here, make sure you have your plus sign and just scroll over each point that you're going to want to eliminate for our cover. All right, there we go. This doesn't have to be perfect and I'll show you why. Come up to our top keyboard, select, modify, expand. Now we're going to expand that selection and we'll do about five pixels. You can see our selection here is outside of um, the entire cutout of Kobe. I want to make sure we're getting rid of all the edges on there. You want to do it just a little bit more, you can. Change this time to two. So I'm about seven pixels off of our selection. Now, come up here to Edit, Content, Aware Fill. And that's going to open up this window here. And this is the result that it's gonna create. I'm just gonna leave it, this is on auto, it's on the auto settings. I'm just gonna leave it as is, change to current layer, and bam. So there we have our background layer, and then there's our original. But you can notice a lot of these spots here are not ideal. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, coming over here and using the clone stamp tool. Clone stamp tool, you can works just like a brush. Up here with your settings, you can change the sizes there. But what you're gonna do, if you hold the Alt key, it's gonna start brushing on that point that you push Alt and clicked. So I wanna try and get rid of all these jagged lines. It's, it's kind of a unique pattern, so it's not gonna look exact, but I don't want um, just these like abrupt changes in it. So I'm gonna try and smooth this out by holding Alt and then clicking um, these different edges and try and smooth it out and then just repeat that. Okay, we have clone stamped and it's not still not perfect, but you have to remember we are gonna be putting a new player photo as well as the 2K logo on there again. It's gonna cover up a lot of those spots that are not ideal. All right, so last thing I wanna do is get rid of this Kobe Bryant edition up here on the top. To do that, I'm gonna come over to the remove tool. You can right click. Make sure you have a remove tool selected. Get a brush, not too big, and I'm just gonna click on each layer. Let it do the work for me. Get rid of that text. And just like that. Can't even tell it was there. So now we have our background. Pretty close, not bad. So now the part you have to decide upon is who you're gonna put on the cover. For me, I'm putting Ant-Man on there. So here's the photo I've selected. I'm gonna pull it down, drag the photo over. And the next step is going to be right click, convert to smart object. Remember, we always want to work with smart objects so that we can add effects and change later um, without messing up the original image. Now it's come time to mask it. Now it's come time to cut our player out to do that. Since it's a smart object, come over here and double click directly on the thumbnail. For this one, uh, a lot going on. I'm going to get for the cleanest cut possible. I'm going to come over here to the pen tool. And I'm just going to zoom in, click and drag. But this is boring to watch, so let's just fast forward through here.
All right, we have used the pen tool and traced all around the entire photo of um, Ant-Man and we want to cut it out. I'm gonna right click, make selection, feather rate is zero and come down here and let it create a layer mask, boom. Um, if you did not know, down here on the bottom, this is our layer mask. If you hide it, disable layer mask, it brings back our full photo, enable there. So everything white is what's visible, everything black is what is cut out of the photo. So there's a couple things that I wanna clean up. Um, right here, you can see where he was behind the defender just a little bit. And on that, I'm gonna, so I just traced around where I think his knee actually was. And I'm gonna come back over here to the clone stamp tool. Get a smaller brush. And I'm just gonna get the white from his tights and just brush. Just take him out, so there we go. Once we put that into the cover, shouldn't be anything that you'll be able to tell. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here in the hair cut out these little tiny dreads. Make selection, and then I'm going to get a black brush. Make sure you have your layer mask selected, and then you can clean up those tiny parts. I'm gonna go through and do the whole thing. All right, I have got the photo cut out how I want it. And now to save this, I'm gonna come up here to the top. And remember, this is a smart object so that it's a Photoshop file inside of our other Photoshop file. As I exit out, I make sure I click yes. Save changes to the current document, layer one, bam. And then there, I'm gonna change the name to player and bring back our background. All right, so there we have our cutout. I'm going to scale it to be about the same size as Kobe is. Maybe just a little bit bigger. The pose is different, so it's gonna be a little bit different, but something right about there. So we're getting there. All right, now I want to come down and duplicate our original layer. I can do that by right-clicking on it, duplicate layer, and I'm gonna change this to 2K banner because what I want to do is come up here to the selection tool and I'm gonna so zoom in so I can see it. And I want to select this blue bar with the logo. And I'm gonna come down, mask it, and then right click, create to convert to smart object. So now we have our own banner here. And if you can see there's an edge right there that I didn't cut out perfect, I'm gonna come in here and I could either trim that, but I'm actually gonna try and stroke I'm gonna come to color, click on color. It'll let you select. And I'm gonna go to inside, bam. And that just is gonna get rid of any of the trim of the background that I missed while selecting it. Okay, we're getting there. There's our original and here we are right now. Maybe the next easiest thing to do is let's bring back our text. Um, I don't know what font that is exactly. I have a couple guesses, but let's see how Photoshop does and picking it out for us. So you can come up here to type match font and you can adjust your handles, have it on that font. Let's do this one. And it's going to pull up fonts that it thinks are close, but these don't look very close to me. So I'm just gonna go with the one I think it is. Let me kind of look through here, but type out your text. Tiffany, that is definitely not it. Okay, Poppins is the font that I have that I think is the closest to it. It might be the exact font, I have no idea really. But I know it's really close, so you won't be able to tell the difference. Now I've typed it. I've got the weight about what I want it to be. I need to get this, you see this distance in between the text? I'm gonna adjust that and get that similar. You can do that by making sure you have the character window open. If you can't find that, go to window character. Make sure that's checked. But I have all of my text selected and then come over here to character and you can play with the spacing of your letters here. All right, something like that looks pretty close. I'm gonna hit Control J to duplicate it, move it down, and this one is gonna be, hit your hotkey T or select your text tool, change it to addition. And remember that font was much thinner, so we'll go, it is smaller as well. So let's lower that font size to about 16. You can space it out a little bit more, something like that. Now let's make sure it's aligned to the center. So you can come over here to your toolbar, hold shift, 
to select most text layers. If you have your move tool selected, you can come to the top and push R center key. All right, pretty close. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is kind of work on that smooth, um, epic effect of the player. So we're gonna do a couple different things. We're gonna start off by clicking on our player and we're gonna do some camera raw, filter, camera raw. Now every photo is different, so you're just gonna kind of have to eyeball it and get the look that you want. But I'm gonna start with auto and I know I wanna brighten it up, which it brightened it up a little bit. And then I kind of wanna get some texture. Yeah, something like that's fine. But I'm gonna lower the clarity. If you notice on the graphic, it's kind of got a really smooth look all around other than the edges. So I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna lower that clarity, lower the clarity just a little bit, then come down. Vibrance is fine right there. Then come down to detail. I wanna sharpen. I like the sharpen, but you can see it's too much. I want it to mostly be on the edges. So if you hold the Alt key, and you move this masking, it'll show you the parts that are actually being sharpened. The higher you move it up, the more it does just the edges. And then radius will kind of show you how it does as well. Hold Alt and then noise reduction. There we go. I think that's a little closer. I wanted a smoother look, but still also sharpening everything up. Okay, next thing I want to do is kind of blend it with colors. I want it to look more involved with the background that it is right now. So let's go to kind of feel like it's in the atmosphere of that background. So come down here, add an adjustment layer of selective color. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is actually make a folder, the player folder. Make sure you slide your photo in that folder and I'm gonna connect this selective color by pushing Control Alt G. It's gonna create a clipping mask, which is this arrow right here. You can also right click and make um, clipping mask but on here you can come up here to properties and kind of see what we can play with to blend these colors a little bit better so first thing I'm gonna start with is red um, you can select the colors that you're gonna affect red is usually you know it's skin tones so I want to you can see it's slightly just a skin tone and the ball I want to kind of add some yellow and purple and bluish colors to the entire picture so you can just play with these sliders and add colors as you need them. But I'm gonna mostly mess with adding blues and yellows, I think. So the skin tones aren't doing a whole lot on him here. So you can come down to blacks. And it's gonna really mess with his hair and all these shadows. And I wanna add some yellows. See, it's not doing a whole lot yet. But we'll just keep playing with it. Just trial and error, and every photo is different. So no, no settings are gonna be the same on any photos. Okay, play with those settings and it's not gonna do a ton. Every photo will do a little bit more than the sum, but I just added a lot of these purples and blues and yellows in spots where I could. The thing I'm gonna try is gonna be actually taking a couple colors from the background, that yellow and that purple, and let's see if we can make a gradient map. Gradient map, and it's got our colors here selected. And I'm gonna just play with the settings and see if I can get it blended in just a little bit more, play with the different layer modes. Must are gonna be way too extreme, but see if I can find like a soft look I kinda like. Something kinda like that. I don't want it on the shadows quite so much. So I'm gonna go down to FX, blending options. I'm gonna come down here to these bottom settings and underlying layer is what I wanna change. So that means everything under this layer that I'm currently open on, it's gonna hide the blacks if you move this slider. Like you can't see this gradient map on the blacks. If I move it here, you can't see it on the whites. So I wanna hold the Alt to get the, this half of that tab and move it out. You have to keep these separated a little bit to be able to blend it a little bit better. But I just wanna see how it looks if we go there. And maybe something like overlay looks pretty good. You can see it adds that, our two colors just adds to the highlighted parts 
of this photo a little bit more. And you can just adjust the opacity wherever you see fit. Now we look back at our original cover, we zoom in. You can see a lot of these um, like rim lights, kind of like an outer glow almost around them. Like our light source is coming from up here. Um, our photo is gonna be going the other direction. So what I wanna do is come down here, make a new layer. I'm gonna push Control Alt G and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and select, let's try this purplish color. Change your brush to a low hardness, zero low really low change it to linear dodge and now let's just brush as if the light was coming from this corner and shining down onto him and just brush one click at a time you don't want this to be too much I'm just getting okay some of that looks kind of bad so one thing I like to do is come down to FX and do the same thing we did with the blend if but I want to have underlying layer i don't want any of that light to be on the darkest parts of him the shadows because that doesn't make any sense you don't want bright shining light on the shadows of your player because light doesn't hit off black the same way pure black shadows will not have any kind of highlight like this so we're going to take that away and do something kind of like that and now i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to select i want this yellowish color and do the same thing on the bottom part All right, zoom out, you can see we're getting a little bit closer. We've got that there, adds that kind of dramatic lighting. You can see that was our original. And we're getting there. Now, you can see this one has a little bit going kind of offside the player as well. Kind of like a little extra effect. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to our player layer. Let's go to FX, let's go to Outer Glow. And let's kind of play with the settings on this. I might change the color to just kind of yellowish that we see on the graphic maybe something like that now let's turn the opacity up because with what we're going to do you're going to be able to change it and let's turn the noise up just a little bit not too much but just a little bit let's try three spread hey spread mode. we don't want to do this this doesn't need to be over exaggerated we just want just a slight bit coming off the player I'm gonna keep the opacity on 100 and you'll see why here in just a second. All right, but let's go okay on that. All right, you can see we added that. And I like it in some parts, not in others. So let's separate this from our player. You can come over here to FX, right click, create layer. So now we actually have that outline on a separate layer behind our player. And I'm going to put a mask on it. I'm gonna zoom in, get a black brush soft hardness flow low and I'm going to erase the parts that do not work with our lighting source remember our light is coming from this top left corner shining onto his face so we kind of want to show that and I'm also going to let's go to FX let's do this first let's do underlying layer we don't want any of it on our pure black parts of our player there we go okay it's a little extreme in some places so I'm just going to Tone it down a little bit with this brush. Get rid of it on this side of him. We're getting pretty close. Now let's just add a little bit more dramatic lighting to our player. I'm gonna come up here to our gradient map and create a new adjustment layer down here. First one is gonna be exposure and we're gonna change the name to shadows. I'm gonna push Control Alt G to create that clipping mask right here. And I'm gonna raise the gamma correction a good bit. So we're not gonna keep all this on here. And you can always adjust the settings after you kind of see how it looks. But yeah, let's just leave the gamma correction raised just a little bit. So there it is before, there it is after. And then I'm gonna come down here again, make another one. This one is gonna be lighting. Or right, let's just do highlights. So this one, we're gonna push Control G and clip it. And you see these are only affecting our player. And then I'm gonna raise the exposure. So something like that. So without the shadows, that's what it'll look like. All right, let's start by doing our shadows. Let's come over here to our mask and push Control I to invert. So now since the layer mask is black, everything is hidden. So I'm gonna get my paintbrush, shortcut key B. I'm gonna change the color to white and I'm gonna keep my flow low and I'm going to brush over the parts that I want to darken up. And I suggest you doing it one click at a time with the flow low. You can see mine is on 17 to just kind of lightly darken different areas of it. 
and I really want to focus on the right side of the player since we have all this light on the left side. I really want to darken up like the back of his arm, places where if the light is coming from this top corner, wouldn't hit him. Okay, something about like that is kind of what I was looking for. You see it really darkened up the right side of the photo. I'm getting a lot more dramatic kind of look that way, uh, more three-dimensional feel to it. Um, best part about this though is you can come over here and look at your, if you click on this little icon, you can always adjust your settings and go up or down with that. If it's not exactly how you want it. Or you can get your brush and you can use a white brush I mean a black brush and erase the parts that you don't like. So now I'm gonna go through and do the same thing with the highlights. I'm gonna come over here, push Control I to make sure that mask is set on black. And I have my paintbrush and the parts that I brush, I'm going to be bringing back, making things a little bit brighter, giving it a little more shine. All right, there you go. There's our after or before, after, before, after. And there you can see that's kind of similar look. Obviously that picture is really, really a good picture. That picture is awesome and like about as best you can ask for. But I think we did a pretty good job replicating that, the look and feel of it anyway. Um, obviously my picture's quality is not as good, which that helps but that's pretty close. One more finishing touch, something I like to do, don't have to do, is I'm gonna brighten up his eyes. Um, to do that, I come down here, create a curves layer, Control-Alt-G to make it a clipping mask again. And then in our properties, you can scroll down and this right side is our highlights, this is our shadows. I'm focusing on the whites of his eyes. So I'm gonna move this over, do the same process that I just did um, before. Get my brush, get the brush very small because I am only going to brush on his eyeballs. Trying to flow all the way up. And I might actually gonna do, I'm gonna turn the flow back down a little bit and we'll brighten his teeth up a little bit too. So it's a very subtle detail. A lot of people probably wouldn't even notice it, but there's the before, there's the after. I'll zoom in for you. Before, after. Just think it helps to be able to see the eyeballs kind of pop off the skin, that contrast really helps you notice his eyes. They don't get lost in the graphic as much. All right, so we are just about there. Really the only thing I wanna try and do is add the logos. So let's create a folder. We'll do game logos. And I actually have already pulled these up off Google. And I'm gonna select and drag all of these over here, put them in this folder, and then I'm gonna cut them all out so let's see actually right click convert to smart object first always convert to smart object so first one we have is the rated e for everyone i'm going to label it i'm going to double click it and i'm going to mask this thing out to do that let's actually try the select subject maybe it'll grab right around those shadows so it'll look like a 3d sticker eh, not quite but i can use the if you have the plus arrow i can just brush on the sides and i'll make my own drop shadow all right, mask it. There we go. Ready to eat for everyone. That goes in the bottom left. Something like that. All right, now here's the 2K logo. This is gonna go in the bottom right. This one is already cut out for us, thankfully. We have the Players Association logo already cut out for us. I wanna push Control T, transform, and make sure I size it appropriately. We'll put it somewhere like there. And there's actually one more sticker, but I don't know where to find it. I don't even know what it is, honestly. So let's just roll with these. And there you have it. This is our, I'm gonna shrink Ant-Man just a little bit so his feet are off of the logo some. And there you have it. We have created our own 2K 
Legends Edition cover. Okay, last step here is to change the backgrounds from Lakers purple and gold to Timberwolves colors. We're gonna do blue and neon. So I've copied and pasted the logo. Now I want to use the eyedropper tool, which shortcut key is I on your keyboard. And I'm gonna select two different colors out of the logo. I'm gonna do the, the like navy blue and green. Now scroll all the way down in your layers. And just above our background layer, we're going to create an adjustment layer of a gradient map. And I'm gonna reverse it, probably do that one. But you can always change this. We're just looking for the right blending mode that's going to give us a shiny contrasted look like the normal cover has and i think linear light probably going to get the job done yeah you want it to be kind of epic and contrasted looking and we could call it a day there if we wanted if you're not happy with that though you might want to introduce some more colors into your gradient map all right to do that double click on your color bar right here if you click on one of these little thumbnails you can hold alt and it'll create a new one and you can see that kind of changes it up a little bit. I'm gonna make that a slightly darker green, kind of introduce some more colors, add some more depth to it. And then same thing here, I might do that, but I might make this far right one a little bit darker. Give us a little more contrast there as well. So I've got four of the team colors there on linear light as a gradient map, changes my colors to the Timberwolves colors. And that will do it for the 2K cover remake. So there you have it. That's how you can recreate your own custom NBA 2K24 cover. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something from this. Hopefully this template could come in handy. And if you wanna download my source files directly, head over to basportdesigns.com. I also have hundreds of other templates there that could help you with your content creation. If you're interested in joining our community on Patreon, it's called Graphic Design for Coaches. Um, exclusive templates are posted there all the time. We also have a group chat for guys looking to network and uh, meet other people who are in the content creation and sport design area as well. So till next time, see you.